Okay, in this video, I'm going to look at a couple of problems involving interest rates. Now, the first problem, I'm going to invest $1,000 at 6% interest for seven years, and I want to know how much money am I going to have after seven years. And I'm going to work this problem two different ways. One, I'm going to compound annually, and two, I'm going to compound monthly, and I'm going to get two different answers, as we're going to see here in a minute. So compounding annually. So this problem is really just a particular type of exponential growth problem. And in exponential growth problems, very often you see uh, this standard form of an exponential function, where A is the initial value, in this case, $1,000. And B is something called the growth factor. And the growth factor is just one plus the growth rate. So in this case, my growth rate is 6%. So my growth factor would be 1 plus 0 0.06. 0 0.06 is 6% expressed as a decimal. So 1 plus 0 0.06 gives me 1.06. That's my growth factor. And then x, my exponent here, is just how many times am I going to be compounding my interest? Well, compounding annually just means that I'm going to calculate interest at the end of each year. So if I'm going to be leaving my money or investing my money for seven years, then this value here is just going to be 7. So if I want to find out how much money I'm going to have at the end of 7 years, I punch this number into my calculator and I get 1,503 dollars and 63 cents. Okay, how much would I have if I compound monthly? Well, again, I'm going to be using essentially the same form of my exponential uh, function, this standard form, but my numbers that I'm going to put in are going to be a little bit different. I'm still going to have the same initial value. That's still going to be $1,000. But this B value now is going to be different because if I'm compounding monthly, now I'm interested in a, not an annual interest rate, 6%, but I'm interested in a monthly interest rate. And to get my monthly interest rate, I just take my annual rate and divide it by 12. So. 6% divided by 12 would be 0.5%. And if I take that and express it as a decimal, move my decimal point over two places to the left, that's 0.005. So this then would be my growth rate. And again, to change that into my growth factor, I have to add 1 to it. So my growth factor, my B value, is going to be 1.005. And now, the number that goes here, again, this number is going to be different than over here because now, even though I'm still investing my money for seven years, since I'm compounding monthly, the number that goes here is not seven because it's not seven years. It's how many months am I going to be compounding? Well, seven years times 12 is 84. So, 84 months. So, my exponent value here is going to be 84. So, now, if I am going to compound monthly, I punch this into my calculator and I get $1,520.37. So if I compound monthly, that is if I calculate my interest more often, then I get a little bit more money than if I compound annually. Okay. Well, let's take a look at another type of problem involving interest. This says the value V of a car can be modeled by the function V of T equals 13,000 times 0.82 to the power of T. Again, we have an exponential function where T is the number of years since the car was purchased. What is the monthly rate of depreciation of the car? And now you can see over here you've got some answer choices. This question was actually uh, taken from uh, a released exam uh, from uh, one of the uh, Math 2 final exams here in North Carolina. And so this is the question as it was worded, and these are the answer choices. And if you like, you can uh, pause the video right here and kind of you know, see if you uh, work out the problem and see if you get the correct answer, uh, and then come back and take a look at how I work through it. So the first thing that when I look at this problem, the first thing that I notice is that, okay, I've got an exponential decay function. And I can tell it's exponential decay because my, my B value here is less than 1 which means that instead of increasing in value, like my money did when I invested it, my car is going to decrease in value. That's depreciating. So this is my decay factor. And if I wanted to calculate the uh, decay rate from the decay factor, well, there's a simple way to do that. 
and let me do this over here because first I'm going to uh, show you the, the way that I did it incorrectly the first time I looked at this problem. So 1 minus 0.82 equals 0.18, which would be 18%. So if I just subtract that from 1, then I'm tempted to say, well, then my, uh, my decay rate, that is my rate of depreciation, would be 18%, which is answer choice D, except 18% would be the annual rate of depreciation, since this is given in terms where t is equal to the number of years. This is an annual rate of depreciation, and I'm looking for a monthly rate of depreciation. All right, so, tempting as it is, I know this is not the correct answer. However, if I've got the annual rate and I just want to find the monthly rate, well, it seems like, well, all I need to do then is divide that by 12, right? 18% divided by 12 is 1.5% which means that my answer choice should be A, except that is not the correct answer. You can't just divide this by 12 and get 1.5%, even though that's exactly what we did in the previous problem. So this really bothered me the first time I looked at it because I was trying to figure out, well, you know, why exactly you know, is this not working? And uh, uh, a good way to see why this is not, in fact, the correct answer is uh, one of the things that I did is I said, okay, well, what's going to be the value of the car after one year? All right. Well, the value of the car after one year since I've got this function that gives me the value of the car where t is the number of years, well after one year I should be able to figure out that let me just write this down. If I take 13,000 times 0.82 to the first power then that should tell me the value of the car after one year. And if I punch that into my calculator, then I get 10,660 dollars. Well, if, I, if, if this were the correct answer, 1.5% were the uh, rate of depreciation per month, then I should be able to take this rate of depreciation and calculate the uh, decay factor for the car, and I should be able to, you know, calculate the value of the car after 12 months. In other words, after 12 months. In other words, if I take this and I convert it to a decay factor, that is 1 minus 0 0.015, that's 1.5 percent, 1 minus 0 0.015 would give me 0 0.985, and then if I use that, in the function 13,000 times 0.985 to the power of 12, in other words, 12 months depreciating at 1.5% per month, well then that should be the same value here. And yet it's not. If I use this percentage, 1.5% uh, percentage depreciation, then it turns out I get not 10,660, but 10,000 843 and 72 cents and clearly those two numbers are not the same number in fact they're off by you know almost 200 well so it's looking like you know I can see kind of why 1.5 percent is not you know is not the correct answer in fact it looks like if I want my car to be worth ten thousand six hundred sixty dollars after 12 months I need to depreciate at a slightly higher rate so that this number will come down and it looks like maybe this would be the correct answer. And if I was taking this as a multiple choice test, I might be tempted to stop at this point and just say, okay, I'm pretty sure that's the answer because 9.2% per month seems really large. So I'll just pick this as the correct answer and move on. However, I wanted to know, you know, how do you go about getting this answer, you know, directly and not just kind of by estimating. And this is what I came up with. Since I know that I want these two values to be the same, in other words, whether I calculate the value of my car you know, as depreciating annually or whether I calculate it as depreciating monthly, these two values should be the same. Well, my annual depreciation value would be 13,000 times 0.82 to the power of 1. My monthly depreciation value would be 13,000 times something 
to the power of 12. And that something is not going to be 0.985, I know because that's, I know that's not the correct decay factor, but it's going to be equal to something, and if I could figure out what that decay factor was, then I could kind of work backwards and figure out what the decay rate would be. Well, since I want these two values here to be equal, then the 13,000 parts, those are already equal. That means I need this part here in the parentheses. I need this part to be, when this is raised to the first power, I need whatever goes in here raised to the 12th power to be equal so that you know, both things come out to be the same number. Well, if I write this as 0.82 to the 1 12th power, well, 0.82 to the 1 12th power all raised to the 12th power, that's going to give me 0.82 to the first power. There's a, a rule of exponents that says if you have something raised to a power and then you take that and raise it to another power, if you just multiply the exponents, then that value would be equivalent. So to get 0.82 to the first power, I need this. Well, now, in this piece right here, I've got the annual, this would be the annual decay factor. And this value right here, that would be my monthly decay factor. Monthly decay factor. Well, if I punch that value into my calculator, then I'm going to find that it is equal to 0.9836 approximately. And if I take that value and if I subtract it from 1, 1 minus 0.9836 equals 0.0164 and if I convert that to a percentage by moving my decimal point over then I get 1.64 percent and now I can see where this answer choice B comes from. Now the questions that I have about these two problems are these. First have I got any errors in my explanation? I don't think I do, but some of you may have uh, may know some more about this than I do. Two, does anyone, especially any finance type people who do stuff with interest rates maybe more than I do, have a better way to explain this? Um, I looked on Google and I did a fair bit of searching around and it was not clear at all to me that there was kind of any consistent way of, of talking about these types of problems. In particular, the second problem involving the car depreciation, that problem was very confusing to me and looking around on Google, I, I, didn't, I, didn't find, uh, I didn't find much in the way of consensus about you know, how to go about explaining those types of problems. And finally, number three, is this obvious to anyone? In particular, that second problem, is it, is it really obvious to anyone how you go about finding that equivalent interest rate? Because I have to say it was not at all obvious to me. So if you can help me out with any of these questions, you can uh, either uh, leave a comment on uh, my blog or on my Facebook page. That would really help me out.